Hey, what's up? It's Shadi NYC, photographer and owner of LR2 Studio. And if you're intimidated by shooting jewelry and highly reflective services, here's a couple of tips just for you on how to shoot jewelry paired with the model as well. Okay, ready? One, two, three. So, when you're shooting jewelry, there's two ways that you can shoot it. It could be by itself as a still life, or it could be with a model. People generally are apprehensive about shooting with jewelry because of the highly reflective nature, but I'm gonna show you how easy it is. So I have a Profoto B10X Plus with the five foot umbrella diffused, and that's the key light, and it's on top at 90 degrees. I have this D2 right here with the three foot Profoto Octa on it. This is gonna serve as a fill light because when the light is above, being that there's a model, it may create shadows around the eyes, which would give a raccoon effect. That's not necessarily flattering for the model. So we just have this light here to fill in those shadows. It's important to make sure that all the jewelry can be seen in its entirety. So you have to make sure that there's proper lighting and proper fill. So when I started, I had an overhead light and fill, but I found that that really wasn't enough. There were still some areas at the bottom of the jewelry that I couldn't really see. There were no details. So I made sure to add an highlighter or any type of reflector will work underneath the jewelry just to make sure that it's lit from all sides. So to prepare for the shoot, I made sure to block anything that was gonna cast any type of different colors other than the lights that I already had. So I made sure that there were no artificial lights or house lights as we call them in the studio. I wanted to make sure that it didn't send any different colors that would affect the color of the jewelry. I also removed any surfaces that might give an extra reflection because it's very important to be able to control the amount of reflection, the amount of shine, and the amount of light that's hitting the jewelry. Awesome. Today I'm shooting with the Fujifilm GFX 100S. And I'm going with the macro lens. This is the 120 macro, it's F4. For jewelry, I like to use a macro lens. This allows me to get really close to the jewelry and pick up the details and the fine shining intricacies of the jewelry. I normally don't say that you need a high megapixel camera, but with a higher megapixel camera, you have the option to have the model. And then if you want to get a little bit closer and have just the jewelry, you could do that without losing any resolution and the picture won't be blurry when it's displayed wherever it's displayed. It's a good idea when you're handling the jewelry, maybe have some gloves on, just to make sure you don't get any fingerprints or smudge it, especially if you're using a macro lens, because once you get really, really close, you'll see everything, all the fingerprints and everything. The FBI will find you. I'm actually shooting at 400 ISO, trying to keep it low. I'm also shooting at F11, because I really want to capture as much of the jewelry in focus as possible. So I'm shooting at a really closed down aperture. 125th of a second because that is the sync speed for this camera that I'm using. If you don't have strobes, that's okay. What you can do is you can use natural light coming from the window. You can do the shoot outside, maybe have a diffusion fabric. If you're out in the daylight, get a white sheet, build like a little fake tent, and you can put the fabric right on top of the tent and then you have diffusion from the sunlight. Perfect, yeah, looking right out the window just like that. Love that. So most jewelry is either gonna come in gold, warm color gold, rose gold, or silver, platinum, white gold. So you have the two spectrums. As we said in one of the earlier videos, when you're working with different colors, there are certain skin tones that go well with those colors. The warmer colors tend to go well with darker skin, um, dark wardrobe, and those type of backgrounds as well. As opposed to the lighter jewelry, like your silver, white gold, platinum, those are gonna go with cooler colors, blues, white, beige, any of those light tones, those work well together. Let's do more of like a profile thing. You do have to get creative with how you're shooting the jewelry. A good way to mix it up if you find yourself shooting the same thing and it's monotonous, I would suggest beforehand to definitely find references or pictures that you wanna recreate. This way you don't have to think about it and stretch yourself out during the shoot. So sometimes posing is a little difficult because what's natural to pose without jewelry may not look good with the jewelry. You may be covering the jewelry up. So you kind of have to get inventive on how you're gonna do the posing, but also trying to make it look natural. So that's 
one of the challenges, but that's something that we could work through. I hope this helps you be less intimidated when it comes to shooting jewelry. These are all tips to help you become more of a well-rounded photographer and you know, you figure out what you like to do. If you have any additional comments or questions even, make sure to leave those in the comments.